Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. When you hear these names, I'm guessing you instantly think of wealth beyond imagination. But what if I told you that hundreds of years ago, there was a man whose wealth far exceeded any of the names you know today? Meet Mansa Musa, the richest man ever to live. Mansa Musa was the ruler of the Mali Empire located in West Africa. He came to the throne in 1312 after the previous king, Abu Bakr, disappeared at sea. He had departed on a large fleet of ships to explore the Atlantic Ocean and never returned, with some even arguing that he may have discovered America. Anyway, that's a story for another day back to Musa. When Mansa Musa came to the throne, Mali was already an incredibly rich country. Mali was a country rich in gold and salt, two of the most precious commodities of the time. But his work in expanding trade made Mali the wealthiest country in all of Africa and made Mansa Musa the richest man who has ever lived. His exact wealth is not known for certain, but sources vary, ranging anywhere from 400 billion to 900 billion in today's money. So what did Mansa Musa do with all of this money? Well, Mansa Musa was a devout Muslim and like a lot of Muslims, he always wanted to make the pilgrimage to Mecca. The fifth pillar of Islam is the pilgrimage to Mecca. It is considered a sacred journey that every adult Muslim who is physically and financially able must take at least once in their lifetime. As far as financially able goes, there's never been anyone more so than Mansa Musa. When he traveled to Mecca, he brought with him 60,000 subjects, 12,000 slaves, 100 camels, and around 15 tons of gold. The trip to Mecca is around 4,000 round miles and took Mansa Musa almost two years to complete. There are many stories of this pilgrimage, but perhaps the most famous is how, when Musa's huge caravan arrived and stayed at the, the city of Cairo for three months, they spent and gave away so much gold that it took 12 years for its value in Egypt to inflate back to normal levels. It is also reported that, whilst on the pilgrimage, every Friday Musa left men behind to construct a mosque wherever they happened to be at the time. Mansa Musa's pilgrimage was the perfect chance for him to flaunt the unprecedented wealth and power of his country, and he took every opportunity to do so. On his way back to Mali, the cities of Gao and Timbuktu submitted to Musa's rule. He wasted no time in improving these cities. Musa brought in architects from Spain to begin huge construction projects in both cities. He had mosques built, most notably a huge center of learning in Timbuktu called the University of Sankor. Timbuktu soon became a center of trade, culture, education, and Islam. News of the Mali Empire and its vast wealth soon spread across the Mediterranean to southern Europe, which led traders from Venice, Granada, and Genoa to add Timbuktu to their trading maps. This added trading only served to increase Musa's wealth even more. Whilst a lot of the ancient buildings from Timbuktu have since vanished, the university and Grand Mosque still stand to this day. In summary, Musa spent a lot of his vast wealth building mosques, universities, and cities with the aim to make his country respected and looked upon in awe, whilst also worshiping and paying tribute to his God. Not a bad way to spend a few bucks. It is impossible to really get a sense of how vast Musa's wealth truly was, but by all accounts, there has never been anyone with even close to his wealth ever to live. So much of our species' history is not talked and taught about enough, but behind every old page in a history book and every old building walked past without a second thought, there is a rich and incredibly interesting story waiting to be told. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more interesting tales from history.